Today we are going to um, look at um, applying those four um, different types of evidence to an article. So the article that we are going to do is called The Benefits of Mix Mixing Rich and Poor. It is by David Kerp. Um, it was pub or it was yes published um, printed in May of 2010. Uh, oh, sorry, May 10th of 2014, and it was a an article that appeared in a series about inequality. So this is an article on um, on uh, inequalities in in America. So I'm going to read. We're going to come. Um, I'm going to mark out the claim, the topic, the claim, and then the evidence and the types of evidence. So we're going to start. Whenever President Obama proposes a major federal investment in early education, as he did in his two most recent State of the Union addresses, critics have a two-word repost, Head Start. Researchers have long cast doubt on, on that program's effectiveness. The most damning evidence comes from a 2012 federal evaluation that used gold standard methodology and concluded that children who participated in Head Start were not more successful in elementary school than, than others. That finding was catnip to the detractors. Head Start's impact is no better than random, the Wall Street Journal editorialized. Why throw good money after bad? So here we have the topic. It is Head Start, so I'm going to put that in a box, and I'm going to put Topic right by it. After that, we have um, three sentences, and they are three different types of um, of evidence. So researchers have long cast out on the program's effectiveness. Anytime you see researchers, that is an authority. So I'm going to write authority on the side. Okay. Um, the most damning evidence comes from an evaluation, so we're going to use that. Is an example of how Head Start is not effective. Okay. And then the very last one, what the Wall Street Journal said, is another example. But headlines can also be an emotional appeal. Okay. The second paragraph. Though the fault finders have a point, the claim that Head Start has failed overstates the case. For one thing, it has gotten considerably better in the last in the past few years because of tougher quality standards. For another, researchers have identified a sleeper effect. Many um, Head Start youngsters begin to flourish as teenagers, maybe because the program emphasizes character and social skills as well as the three R's. Still, few would give Head Start high marks, and the bleak conclusion of the 2012 evaluation stands in sharp contrast to the impressive results from well-devised studies of state finance pre-kindergartens. So here we have the claim. It actually comes out and says the claim. Okay. So this first paragraph states that, so I'm going to write claim here. This first paragraph states that, um, thanks to this 2012 evaluation, um, people think that Head Start um, programs are ineffective. But this author, his stance or his claim is that they um, are not seeing the full picture. So then he gives some evidence. Um, it has gotten considerably better in the past because of tougher standards. So he's giving an example. Okay. Another reason, again, we see researchers because we see researchers up here. Um, this is going to be another authority. So we're going to write authority on the side. Okay. And then the last sentence, we have the evaluation again that we talked about up here. So this is another example. Okay. So we're going to look at the third paragraph now. Head Start, a survivor of President Lyndon B. Johnson's war on poverty, enrolls only poor kids. That's a big part of the problem, as the adage goes. Programs for the poor often become poor programs. Whether it's health care, 
compare the trajectories of Medicare for those 65 and older of all incomes and Medicaid only for the poor. Education or housing, the sorry truth is that we don't like subsidizing them. Head Start is no exception. It has been perpetually underfunded, never able to enroll more than half of eligible children or pay its teachers a decent wage. Okay, so we have um, uh, an emotional appeal here that um, Head Start only enrolls poor kids. So that then we see that that is one of the problems um, because poor. Uh, programs that service the poor are most often underfunded. After that, we see um, an example, but this example has um, some facts. So we're going to put facts on this side. Okay, so we are comparing uh, Medicaid and Medicare. And then lastly, we see Head Start is no exception. It's, perpet um, it's perpetually underfunded, and kids who need it can't um, can't get in the, in it because only um, half about half go, and then they can't pay decent teachers. So this is another emotional appeal. So we're going to put emotion, okay? The next paragraph, if Head Start is going to realize its potential, it has to break out of the anti-poverty mold. One promising but unfortunately rarely used strategy is to encourage all youngsters, not just poor kids, to enroll. With poor families paying nothing and middle class families contributing on a sliding scale, another is to merge Head Start with high quality pre uh, state pre-kindergarten. So we have two things going on here, um, enrolling both rich and poor kids, and merging it with pre-kindergarten. These are the two reasons or the two ways, sorry, um, the two reasons or the two ways that um, Head Start works. So this author is now, he's made his claim that um, Head Start is not all bad, and now he gives his two reasons on how it can work. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to read the next paragraph. Sorry, I'm going to move this up. I want you to read the next paragraph. starts with Rosemont, and I want you to read through it and mark out the evidence that you see. So remember the types of evidence. Is it an example? Is it a fact? Is it um, an authority? Is it somebody who is an authority in the field? Or is it an emotion? Okay, so I want you to go through this next paragraph. I am going to read it as well, but I'm going to read it silently, and then I will mark, and then once you're finished, you can see what's marked. Okay, so the paragraph above, we had our two reasons. And so these are now examples of a Head Start program that is, um, is successful. So Rosemont Center, this first um, sentence, is an example of why um, Head Start can work. After that, all of these sentences that give details and facts about the program are the facts and statistics. Okay. So the next paragraph, and it's going to flip over to the back, but I will um, flip it back again. Watch these kids chirping away in English and Spanish, and it's hard to distinguish the poor kids from the junior plutocrats. A 2010 evaluation by the Children's National Medical Center concluded that compared with national norms, the Rosemont children 
well-to-do and poor alike, had well-developed social skills and relatively little problem behavior. The poor immigrant youngsters had nearly caught up with their native English-speaking peers in skills like pre-reading that prepare them for kindergarten. These kids are learning from one another. Okay, so I'm going to flip it back over to the front because one of the pieces of evidence starts on the front. So, and that is this evaluation in 2010, and then it moves over to the back side. Okay, and it goes to problem behavior. Okay, and this is an example. Okay. Okay, so I want you please to do the next paragraph as well. You go through and figure out which type of evidence you see. I am also going to do it quietly and then we will compare. Okay, so this one has decades of research, and remember when we had researchers, they were the authorities, but when we talk about research, this is facts. So the decades of research has shown that poor students benefit is a fact, okay? Okay, we're going to do the next paragraph together. A 2007 Connecticut study found that poor children who attended economically mixed pre-kindergarten classes progressed from well below the national average in crucial language skills to just above it during the course of the school year, while those in low-income only classes remained below the norm. A new evaluation of Boston's heralded preschools reaches the same conclusion. Peers matter. Vocabulary and background knowledge play a major part in student learning, says Jason Sachs, who runs the Boston program, and interacting with mixed income students allows for richer discussions among students. In achievement and other measures, well off kids in integrated settings do better sorry, do neither better nor worse. Okay? So we have this beginning, the Connecticut study. Okay? So again, remember this a study is research, and research is facts, so we're going to underline that one. Okay, so this is facts. Okay. And then we have this person who is giving information from the Boston program, and he is an authority. Okay, so facts and authority. The next paragraph, we're going to move it up a little bit. We need to think carefully about our policies where the students are all poor, adds Mr. Sachs. Case in point, Washington, which has been a national leader in efforts to bridge this social divide. Their Head Start dollars are blended with state preschool funds to deliver a high-quality education for three- and four-year-olds, one that combines the academic focus of pre-K with the array of supports like medical checkups and year-round early education that are backed into Head Start. In Washington, as elsewhere, residential segregation makes economic, socioeconomic integration hard to achieve. But in D.C.'s gentrifying neighborhoods, these preschools are mixing middle class and poor kids. Okay, so again we have um, Mr. Sachs, who is an authority. Okay, then we have case in point. Okay, so I'm going to put this in a box because this is, remember when we talked about um, Rosemont, that was our example number one. So this is going to be the second program, sorry, <coughs> the second program that shows um, real promise or that shows that Head Start is a good, um, good case. Okay, so here we have... Um, 
a description of what the program is. So there's not much else that's there unless you wanted to go with um, some details about that um, Washington program. Okay, so I'm going to scoot this up. Broadening Head Start's con constituency to include the middle class also has a solid political rationale. While parents without money are obligated to take what they can get, better off parents will insist on the best for their kids. Confronted with those demands, elected officials are more likely to spend what's needed to deliver first-rate early education. An economic analysis of political support for redistribution, prepared for the World Bank, concludes that the poor are actually worse off when a program like Head Start targets targets them exclusively. Okay, so we have this idea up top here as an example. Okay, this is what this program is doing correctly. And then at the end, the economic analysis is again facts. Okay. All right, to wrap it up. For the better part of two centuries, public education, available to all and equal for all, has been a bedrock American principle. Imagine the outrage if a school district created uh, pauper classes for first graders. Why should preschoolers be treated differently? So here, this um, is an appeal to emotion. This is trying to make people feel that um, it's being, it is e unequal, okay? So what um, you're going to do next is um, you're going to go to the next article and you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to read through it and you're going to identify the four types. You're going to identify the claim and then you're going to identify the four types of evidence that is used in that article as well. That should be um, the next assignment in the Schoology um, Schoology um, site.